house of the Lord there is joy there is joy there is joy in the house of the Lord there is joy in the house of the Lord there is joy there is joy Swim in the waters, we want to dance. Come on, sing that with us. There is a river flowing, a river of joy and laughter. We want to swim in the waters, we want to dance. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy. Swim in the waters, we want to dance. There is a river flowing, a river of joy and laughter. We want to swim in the waters, we want to dance. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy. of the mighty power of the Holy Ghost. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom. In the name of Jesus, I ask that you all gather in with me right now. 
Bring your family together. Bring your children together with you. Today is a day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Let's just lift our hands together right now and let's just thank God for the freedom, for the liberty, for the miracles, for the blessings. Lord, we thank you for the freedom. Lord, we thank you for your liberty. Lord, we thank you for your presence and for your power. Lord, we bring these needs before you. There are many, many, many needs. Many people that need miracles. Many people that need to hear the sound of life. They need to hear the sound of joy. They need to hear the sound of liberty and freedom. They need to hear the sound of the moving of angels. Lord God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus for this healing, healing virtue and power come into every heart, come into every home, unto every place, God, as we have gathered together in your holy and wonderful name. I speak healing. I claim healing. I profess healing. I confess the healing power of the name of Jesus Christ upon every home, upon all of our families, upon all of our children. In the holy and mighty and wonderful name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Will you put your hands together with me right now? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Will you lift your voice with me? Oh, fill your house with praise. Fill that place with praise wherever you are. Fill your car with praise. Perhaps you're out in a vehicle. Fill it with praise right now. Let the heavens hear the sound of the saints of God as they rejoice and praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Thank you, Lord. Glory unto your holy name. Glory unto your mighty name. Thank you, Lord God, filling this place. Thank you for the harvest. Thank you for what you are doing this day, this hour. Thank you for that mighty power that reaches unto the north and the south and the east and the west uh, unto the four corners of the earth. Uh, the glory of the Lord has come. Uh, the glory of the Lord fills the earth. Victory in the power of the name of Jesus. Uh, we claim it. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to ask the musicians to sing this song again. Let's sing this song again. Hallelujah. Come on, worship in the power of the Holy Ghost. Lift up your voice with me right now. Fill your house with praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. And this is the house of the Lord. There is this joy place. in the house of the Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord.
God, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. What a glorious day the Lord has made. This is a day of fruit. This is a day of the fruitfulness of the Almighty God. I felt it in my spirit while ago and when I was praying, a vision came before my eyes and it was a vision of shaking a tree and fruit falling to the ground. And I began to thank the Lord for the fruit. Amen. This is the hour. This is the time. I want to welcome each and every one of you that have joined in live stream. And I want to say thank you to our church family. That you are helping me today. You are praying and worshiping with me. I want to feel and hear your voices in the Spirit. And I want to say thank you to the dear family that brought us posters. Over here to my left, I'm seeing three faces that are drawn on posters. And you don't know how much that blessed your pastor. You have no idea the blessing that gift was. Those small things, they mean so much to us. And I want to say thank you. I want to welcome all that are watching this service today. This is a day of miracles. This is a day of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And if you have not received the Holy Ghost, as the Scripture says, and in the book of Acts. Today is your day. Today is your day. Before we move to the time of offering and tithes and giving, I want you to receive a greeting from Brother David Solis. We usually hear from him on Sunday mornings when our services are uh, the, the normal way where everybody's here. And so please enjoy the greeting from Brother Solis. All glory, honor, and praise be unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords forever and ever. As you're giving of your tithes and offering, be encouraged. He's still sovereign. He's still providing, and he's still making a way where there seems to be no way. And he's still looking out for every single person who will call upon his holy and righteous name. All glory, honor, and praise be unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords forever and ever. As you're giving of your tithes and offering, be encouraged. He's still sovereign. He's still providing, and he's still making a way where there seems to be no way. And he's still looking out for every single person who will call upon his holy and righteous name. All glory, honor. Amen. Now, before they put the screen up that shows us the three ways that, that you can give, I just want to make some announcements real quick. And one of them is if you are watching today, please hit your share and whatever it is that you're watching with and through, click share. We want to share this with everybody. We want somebody today to receive of the blessings of the Lord. Maybe there's some friend of yours, but we want to share with everybody. Also, I want to make an announcement that uh, Good Friday, which is coming up this Friday at 7 p.m., we're going to have a, a short communion service. And we would love for you to partake of communion with us, have some juice, crackers ready. Of course, we had an opportunity for the church to come by yesterday and do a wave by and pick up the packets of the communion packets so they would have them. But please be ready Friday night at 7 p.m. And let's just have a short time together taking communion together. 
and rejoicing together and what the Lord has done for us. Also, I have some exciting news again today after service. Someone is going to be baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus, Melissa Azuna. She wants to be baptized. And so at the end of service, we'll be baptizing her. We'll be going live stream again with our iPhones at that time. Amen. For those of you that are watching live stream on Facebook, you'll be able to see that. And so, again, I want to say thank you for joining with us. There are three ways to give. This is the time of tithes and offering. And this is also Mission Sunday, the first Sunday of every month. Our church celebrates Mission Sunday, Global Missions. And so they, it brings remembrance to our mind. That's why you've seen the shirts that our musicians behind me have been wearing today. It says, Reach. They wear them on Mission Sunday to remind us of giving and being a part of the things around the world. So this is a reminder to our church family, please don't forget giving unto missions. Also, it's a time of giving and offering and tithes right now. We're taking out this time. Going to give you a few moments you can see on the screen there. There are three ways to give. One of them is by using your iPhone. You can download Secure Give. And then you can go into it, set up your account, go to the state of Texas and find Pentecostals of Atascacita. And there you will be able to give. Also, you can do it on our website. You will find the tab there in our website that says donate. Uh, We prefer you go to the secure give donate tab and go there, enter into it and you can give there. Also, you can mail it to our address. 3448 Atasca Cedar Road in Humble, Texas, 77396. Or you can personally bring it by, put it in the mailbox. Our mailbox is a secure mailbox. We only receive mail. Nothing can be taken out of it. It is locked. It is secure. So if you would like to just come by, pray a blessing over us, over our church, over the premises. It would bless us tremendously, amen, and just put it in the mailbox. We want to give you the opportunity right now as they're just playing music for just a moment. Go to one of these ways of giving. Give unto the Lord. Be a blessing to the kingdom of God. But more than anything, be obedient to the word of God and live in faith. Obey the word of the Lord. Give of what God has given you. Give the tithe, which is a tenth. Be sure and give that. It belongs to the Lord. The offering is a sacrificial given above the tithe. God bless you as you give. We're going to give you just a few moments.
was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And verse 14 of the book of John, and the Word was made flesh, and it dwelt among us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for coming. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you, Lord, for the blood that was shed. Lord, that we may be recipients today, receivers of the great blessings of the Almighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. Again, I want to say thank you to all of you that you are watching live stream today. And I ask you to join with me in just a moment as I pray again before I began preaching the word of the living God. That you would prepare your home and prepare your heart to receive of the Lord. I seen that vision of the fruit trees and the fruit falling to the ground. I want you to use your imagination. That imagination wasn't given to you. So when you were a child, you could imagine yourself driving cars and getting married and all of those things that children do in their world of imagination. But I want you to use that faith where you can see things. I want you to use your faith and imagination, I want you to see fruit falling into your house. I want you to see it falling from those limbs. Falling. The fruit, the blessings, the gifts of the living God. We do not live by bread alone. We live by that heavenly bread. 
the words that come from our Lord and our God. In faith today, I want you to be a receiver. There are many of you today, you are going to receive the Holy Ghost. It is your day. It is your day to receive the beautiful promise of our Heavenly Father. To receive of His Spirit, like the Bible says. You have to go to the book of Acts to know what I'm talking about. Because it did not come until after Jesus was glorified. It was after the death and the burial and the resurrection. That's why you go to the book of Acts. Find out what came after Jesus ascended again unto heaven. It is for you today. And I want you to prepare your heart and prepare your home. I want you to spend some time in repentance while the word of the Lord is going forth. So you will be ready for the Holy Ghost to come upon you, the Holy Spirit of God. I'm going to pray before we go into the Word. Lord, forgive us of our sin. Forgive us, Lord, things we've said in disobedience to your Word things that we have done that have been unpleasing. Things, Lord, that we've harbored in our hearts against other people. Bitterness that we carry. Will you wash us? Will you cleanse us? Will you prepare our heart? Will you wash it, Lord, that it will be fertile ground. Ready to receive ready to be a recipient of the beautiful seed of the Word of the living God. And it will bring forth fruit. Souls are going to be filled with the Holy Ghost today with evidence of speaking in other tongues. As they are praying and feeling the stammering of the lips coming upon them, they began to feel a joyfulness filling their spirit and they opened their voice. I pray today This be their special day. Lord, this is such a critical hour, and I know it is. And Lord, I thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for those that are going to receive it today in the wonderful and holy name of Jesus. And I want you to send us testimonies through the website, Facebook, whatever their ways of sending messages to us. We want to hear of the testimonies. We're going to be overcomers. The Lord said it's by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Let's go into the word of the Lord together, if you will. Join me in Acts chapter 1, reading verse 4. and It will be a lengthy reading. I'm going to read through verse 11. But I want you to see the entirety of Uh, what I'm going to be covering here in verse 4 and being assembled together with them this is speaking of Jesus he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but wait for the promise of the Father which saith he you have heard of me John truly baptized with water But you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. And when they therefore were come together, they asked Jesus, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? He said unto them, and please hear what I'm saying. Please hear the word of the Lord today. He said unto them, It is not for you to know 
the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in His own power. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld or while they were looking at him, he was taken up. A cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, You men of Galilee, why stand gazing into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven as you have seen him ascend unto heaven this same Jesus will descend from heaven I want to talk to you on what the Lord has given for me to tell you today be more than a believer be ready Be more than a believer. Be ready. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for those that will receive it. The heart that is ready to receive it. Thank you for those that are going to receive of your spirit. The hearing of these words. They're going to hear the word of the Lord, and they're going to respond to it. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Thank you for those of you that were standing at the reading of the word of the Lord. And those few that I have in here with me, they were standing with me. God bless you for doing that. The Lord had laid upon this church a message. It was by the gifts of the Spirit. It was earlier in the year, before any of us knew about this, he spoke that there would be a shift, that there has been a shift. We didn't know exactly what that meant, but now we understand that shift, and it is a global shift. It's not only going on in our nation, but it is going on around the world. We know it's due to this coronavirus pandemic. And we also know that it's bigger than that. More is involved in it than what you understand and what I understand. We know that things are falling into place exactly the way prophecy has said. And people are desperately looking and reaching for things that they think are the most urgent necessities. It's been going on in their mind and in their spirit. And as you know, there's been a lot of humor on Facebook about it. To some people, the most urgent necessity is toilet paper. And there have been pictures on Facebook with Toilet paper rolls all over the wall inside the house. People are definitely prepared because they thought this urgent necessity required a lot of toilet paper. Kind of humorous. Sanitizer. The world scrambled. They went running crazy. The shelves emptied because the most urgent need of the hour is we need sanitizer. We need to continually be washing our hands. And to some people, it was food. So they ran out, got everything they could, fill in their pantries. And to some people, it was their medicine needs. And 
They began to make sure that they had everything that they needed, the medicines that they're using on a daily basis. And everything is being hoarded and people are scrambling. They are searching. They think this is what they need. It is the urgency of the hour. And to some... The urgent need is for a drug, a certain drug to give our body an immunity to the deadly virus. And they're talking about that and the urgent need of the hour. People are categorizing what they call the most important need of the hour. And many, many, many people are frantically searching in desperation because they want to fulfill that necessity or that need of the hour. People are doing whatever it takes, and you know that as very well as I do. They are waiting in long lines, standing behind one another, going through the same airways and walking through the same atmospheres and, and all of these things, but in desperation to receive the necessities, uh, waiting in the long line, waiting on the phone for hours, uh, wanting to make through, get through to make sure that they have some kind of a paycheck, uh, make sure that they're going to be taken care of. Uh, they're, they're waiting and frantically reaching for the stimulus package, uh, the necessity of the hour, the most needed necessity. Uh, that's what the people are feeling. Uh, we have been hearing a word used a lot lately by the president, by the World Health Organizations, by the news media, and that word is called essential. Identifying who and what is essential. And a lot of humor's been in that. Some people have shirts saying, I'm a non essential. Or another one has a shirt, I'm an essential. But it simply means what is the most importance. Jesus tells us what is essential. Jesus tells us in his word what is essential. He tells us what is of the utmost importance. And that is being filled with this power of the Holy Spirit. Filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. That is the most essential thing. On this earth right now. I don't know what your list of essentials say. But I'm going to tell you what God's list of essentials say. I am going to preach to you what God says is the most essential thing. And I pray that you will hear it. And I pray that you will receive it. I pray that you will not make light of it. And that you will not joke about it. I pray that you will not pass this moment by right now. But you will take it very, very, very seriously. You must be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. The disciples were thinking the most important thing at that time was knowing when Jesus was coming back. Knowing when he was going to restore the kingdom of Israel. Knowing when Jesus would rule and reign on this earth. Acts chapter 1 verse 7, But he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons, the Father hath put this in his own power. But this is for you. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they were looking upon him, he was taken up. A cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, two men stood by they were in white apparel and they said you men of Galilee why stand gazing unto heaven that same Jesus that was taken from you into heaven shall come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven I want to say this right now I feel it in the Holy Ghost and that is 
Do not be looking for some man upon this earth working miracles to run out chasing after him. This Messiah that I'm preaching about, he is going to come in the same manner he went. He's going to come down. It's not going to be somebody off somewhere calling fire down from heaven. The Bible talks about an antichrist and an antichrist system. We've ever seen it ready to be set up. We see it happening now. We see the call. We see a call for a one world government. We see a call and hearing about a digital system and things being put into your bodies and everything being set up. But I'm going to tell you this Jesus I'm preaching about. I'm looking for my Redeemer to come in the clouds. I'm looking for my Redeemer the same way he went. He is going to come again. The most important thing right now is not what the world calls essential. The most important thing is not knowing the time or the season that the Lord is coming. But the most important thing right now is being ready. You've got to be ready. You've got to be ready. Whatever it takes, be ready ready. Don't worry about what people say about you. It's time to get all of that out of your mind. Well, I'm afraid of what somebody's going to think about me if I began receiving the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues like the Bible says. Forget about what people think about you. What you want to do is be ready. That's the most important thing. As you be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, you've got to be ready for the coming of the Lord. The most important thing is being filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. It is the resurrection power that was in Jesus Christ raised him from the dead. That same power is going to get you and I out of here. When the Lord calls forth for the church, it's going to take us out of here. It's that resurrection power of our Lord Jesus Christ It's the power of the Holy Ghost that's going to save you from the evil and from the deception of an antichrist system. From the deception that is going to deceive even the elect is what the Word of God says. A a deception, but you've got to be saved from that. You've got to have the power to overcome. You've got to have the power to be saved in the power of God. That's the most important thing. Will you put your hands together? I want you to be involved in this message. Don't just be on the hearing side, but be on a receiving side. I want you to be open. Everything about you be open. Your worship, your praise, your everything be open this morning. There was a song that came to my mind as I was preparing this message. And it says, I'm going to rise so high. When my spirit spreads its wings across the sky, the risen one is coming to take me away. I'm going to live forever in his kingdom someday. I'm going to rise. You've got to be ready. You've got to be ready. Will you lay your hands on your children if they're around you? Will you just pray with your family? Will you get them together right now before I preach any further? Come on. Prepare this place. Prepare it for what the Lord is going to do. Prepare your house. This is more important than that toilet paper. This is more important than that food in your pantry. This is more important than anything else in this world. It's being ready. Being ready. Be ready for the coming of the Lord. Jesus said in Matthew 10 and verse 28, Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Let me paraphrase this. Let me paraphrase it to an understanding In case you don't quite understand. It's not the things that this world classifies as essential. That matters the most. 
It is the things that God classifies as essential that matters the most. It is not the essentials for life on the earth. It is the essentials for eternal life. What is most important? What is essential? I want to soberly ask you the question. What has been essential to you? And what's going on? I'm going to tell you the most essential thing is being ready. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. The Bible tells us that after Jesus rose again from the grave, we are nearing that season right now, beginning Friday, where we all think about the death, the burial, and the resurrection. And of course, we rejoice together on resurrection morning. I want you to understand right now. After he was resurrected, Jesus ministered 40 days. 40 days before he ascended unto heaven. Acts chapter 1 verse 2. And until the day which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days. Speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. It was also recorded in the gospel of Luke Jesus said in Luke 24 and 49, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Go and tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with the power from on high. And he led them out as far as to Bethany. He lifted up his hands and he blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him. And they returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple. And they were praising and they were blessing God. Are you still with me? It was recorded by the Apostle Paul how many had heard the words of Jesus. And that 40 day span between the resurrection and his ascension into heaven. 1 Corinthians Chapter 15, verse 4. He was buried. He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, which was the disciples. And after that, he was seen of more than or above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, meaning until the time that he was speaking of this. But some of them have fallen asleep. Some of them have died. But he identified that Cephas, the twelve, and over 500 people had received of that ministry in that 40-day span. And they heard Jesus telling how important it was to be filled with the Holy Ghost. How important it was to go and tarry, wait in Jerusalem until they be filled with the Holy Ghost and endued with that power and receive the promise of God, which is a promise of salvation. Do you know how many people there were that were waiting? 
for that promise? How many of those in that group from that 40-day span were waiting and tarrying in Jerusalem, waiting for that promise to come? Do you know how many were there receiving the Holy Ghost uh, whenever, as he had said it should be? Uh, it's very, very, very important to understand. More important than knowing the times or the seasons of the coming of the Lord is being ready. Please hear what I'm saying. In Acts chapter 1 verse 15, And in those days Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples, and he said the number of the names together were about 100. And 20. Listen to me. Let me preach what God has laid in my heart for those that will listen today. Other than the 12, other than Cephas, other than more than 500 followers of Jesus Christ uh, that were commissioned, uh, where God said, Tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with the power from on high. Over 500 more followers were commissioned. They received the word to be in the upper room. You shall receive the Holy Ghost. But for some reason, there were only 120 or approximately 120 when God poured out His Spirit for the first time in the book of Acts. They were so close. They were only one step away from receiving of the Holy of Holies. They were one step away from receiving receiving of the glory of God. They were one step away from receiving of the promise of the Father. They were one step away from being endued with the power from on high. But yet, well over 380 of them, they were not there. They were not waiting. They were not seeking the face of God. They were not tarrying in the place He told them to be. Please hear what I am saying today. Hear what the Spirit is saying today. These were identified as followers. They were identified as believers. But they never made it all the way to be in the promises of God. I'm not here this morning to preach pie in the sky. I'm not here this morning to preach some beautiful message and get some pat on the back and somebody say, oh, how beautiful that is. I'm not interested in tickling the ears of people. I'm not interested in trying to speak words that draws big crowds because of how great of an, a, a speaker I am. I am desperate to save people from the pits of hell. That is very real. I've heard it preached all of my life. I've heard it preached from my forefathers with sweat coming down their faces as they wept and cried about a place of eternal hell. I'm here today to preach to somebody. Unprecedented times calls for unmistakable preaching. The clear sound of a trumpet, a voice where there is a understanding of exactly what is being said. You need to be more than a believer. You need to be ready. There are so many followers uh, that have followed Jesus uh, but did not receive uh, the Holy Ghost. Uh, there are believers uh, that believed upon him uh, and they did not receive uh, the Holy Ghost. Uh, the most important need of this hour is being filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, be ready for the coming of the Lord. Uh, be ready for the coming of the Lord. Be ready for the coming of the Lord. Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Look at this in John 12 and 42. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believed on Jesus. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they would be put out of their synagogues. They loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. They wanted to please men more than they wanted to please God. They were believers. They were believers. They believed 
on Jesus Christ. Many of them believed on him, but they were not receiving what God had for them. I'm preaching to you. Be more than a believer. Be more than a believer. Be more than a believer. Be ready. Be ready. Don't let others keep you from receiving the Holy Ghost today. Don't let other people in whatever denomination you may be a part of. Denominations are not important. It's the being ready that's important. It's the message of salvation that's important. Pentecost, that only means 50. It only means what happened on the 50th day after the blood was shed. On that 50th day, they received the salvation of the Almighty God. I just wonder what's going to happen the day of Good Friday, the day His blood was shed. I wonder what's going to happen this Easter Sunday morning. And I wonder what's going to happen on the 50th day, on the day of Pentecost this year. Don't let somebody or anything keep you from receiving the Holy Ghost. As the Bible says, as the Scripture says, not as man, as the Word of God says where you receive it and begin speaking in tongues, as the Spirit gives the ability and the utterance. You've got to go all the way. You've got to be ready. Hallelujah. 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 We understand, we know right now all of the stuff that's going on around us and how that we are all in that place of quarantine all over the world. And it is the second time in Jewish history where the Jews are going to be quarantined as they celebrate the Passover in their home. This will be the second time. The first time was that day we read about on that Passover. That first time. But now, hallelujah, I just wonder. I just wonder. I just wonder what all is going on now. If ever, ever, ever you felt an urgency and a mandate of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah to receive the Holy Ghost. Receive it now. More than being a believer. You got to be ready. Jesus made it very clear that those that believe the way the Scripture speaks, they will receive the Holy Ghost after He is glorified, after He has ascended unto heaven. That's why you read it in the second chapter of Acts, because it was after. John 7 and 37, in the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and he cried and he said, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believes on me. He didn't just stop there. As the scripture has said. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Verse 39, this spake he of the Spirit, capital S, that's the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. There is a difference in being a believer. And being ready. Jesus said in Mark 16 verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they're going to cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. And they shall lay their hands on the sick, and they shall recover. He that believeth and is baptized 
shall be saved. He that believeth and is baptized. Baptized is plural. It is not a singular thing. That's why he spoke of the water and of the spirit. There is a baptism of the water and of the spirit. You've got to be born again. You've got to be baptized of the water and of the spirit. You've got to be filled with the Holy Ghost to be saved. You've got to be baptized. Jesus said he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. More than being a believer Please hear what I'm saying. Please hear what the Word of God is saying. Be ready. Be ready. James chapter 2 verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils believe. And they tremble. The devils believe. I said the devils believe. But more than a believer. Be ready. Be ready. Apostle Paul made this very clear to the followers of John the Baptist as our musicians are coming. Acts 19 and 2 he said. Have you received the Holy Ghost? Since you believed. This is the Apostle Paul. He wasn't one of the twelve. This was a message that the Lord had given him. Have you received the Holy Ghost. Since you believed. You are followers of John the Baptist. You are believers. They said, we've not even heard whether there be a Holy Ghost. He said, unto what then were you baptized? They said, unto John's baptism. And Paul said, John verily baptized with baptism of repentance and said unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, and that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they began speaking in tongues as the power of God was upon them. They were baptized of baptism. They were baptized believing on Jesus Christ but unto repentance They were not baptized in Jesus' name. And they had not received the Holy Ghost. What I'm saying, don't just be a believer. Be ready. This morning I'm going to stay in here and tarry along with you. Because there are people today, something's going to change and something's going to happen inside of you. You have been believing. There's no doubt. I don't question that a bit in my mind. There are many people that are hungry. And they are thirsty. And they truly are seeking after God. I don't doubt that one bit. There are many, 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 many people all over this world. You are believers. But you've got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You've got to speak in tongues as the Spirit gives you the utterance. The power of God. The power of salvation. You must be filled with His Spirit. You must be baptized. If you've not been baptized in Jesus' name, you must be baptized in Jesus' name. And you must be filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't just be a believer. Be ready. Matthew 24 and verse 40. Jesus said, two are going to be in the field. One is going to be taken. And the other one is going to be left. Two women are going to be grinding at the mill. This is words speaking and relating to those of that day that were working. 
One's going to be taken and the other's going to be left here. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour the Lord doth come. Know this, if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have been ready. He would have watched and he wouldn't have suffered his house to be destroyed by a thief. Be ready, for in such an hour as you think not, Son of Man cometh. Luke 12 and 40, Jesus said, be ready, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. Again, we're going to spend time in repentance. I want you to prepare the atmosphere for what you are going to receive right now. Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. Don't hold back. Don't be reserved. Open your mouth. You began worshiping and praising God with everything within you. Exceed what you would be doing if there was something that just rises excitement in you, whatever it might be upon this earth. Open up yourself. Don't worry about what people think. Don't worry about what people think around you right now. Lord, I pray right now. You have said the harvest is ready. You have said the harvest is ready. We ask you today, forgive us. I pray with all of those that are praying with me. Unto the four corners of the earth the north and the south and the east and the west. Lord, forgive us of our sins. Lord, wash us with your blood. Wash away the scars. Wash away the sins. Wash it away Lord, at this altar, we, we come with a sacrifice. Lord God, forgive us. Cleanse us. Wash us. For from this altar, Lord, we are going to move unto that place of the baptism. We're going to move unto that place of the Holy of Holies. We're going to move unto that place of the receiving of being baptized completely baptized and filled and washed by your spirit and by your power today in every house and every room and all over the world of those who are listening lord we repent forgive us forgive us god if we have put what man say about you forgive us if we have cared more about what other people think than what you think forgive us forgive us Lord God but we want to be ready we want to be ready it's not for us to know the hour or the season it's for us to be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost it is for us to be filled with your promise of salvation. It is for us to be ready when you do come. I pray in the name of Jesus. Come on right there. Come on. Oh, lift up your voice. Let the Spirit of God intercede with groanings, with utterances. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Lord, fill us with your spirit. Fill us with the power of the Holy Ghost. Fill us, God, exactly the way the scripture has said. That we truly be identified as the believers that the scripture is speaking about. That we be identified, Lord. We understand the devils believe that they're not going to be saved. We've got to do more than believe it. We've got to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Come into our vessels. Come into our hearts. Come into us, oh God. That out of us shall flow rivers of living water. Out of us, oh God, we will be a part of the river of life. We will be connected in it, oh God. Use the intercessors right now that are praying. The Holy Ghost filled saints of God. Oh God, they're praying. We're praying together. We are interceding together. This hour, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive it. Receive it. Come on. Pray with your wife, your husband, your friend. Pray. Intercede. Let the Spirit of God burst forth out of your vessel. Just like the day of Pentecost oh, With the Holy Ghost It is coming to you It is coming to you It is coming to your children It is coming to your brothers It is coming to your sisters It is coming to all It is coming to all It is coming to your sisters It is coming to all 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 It is coming to all
In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on. This is the New Testament death, burial, and resurrection experience. This is. Hallelujah. Come on. For the first time in our lives, we are quarantined in this place. Hallelujah. Could this be? Could this be? Oh my God. Oh, hallelujah. Something mighty and powerful that is happening in the New Testament church. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God for the covering, for the blood of the Lamb, and by the testimony that we have been baptized. We have been baptized in the water and in the spirit. We have been baptized. Holy Ghost, fire. Yes, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, shall be ready for the coming of the Lord. Ah, come on, now somebody, I feel it in the Holy Ghost. You are having yourself a time right now in your house. You are having yourself a time. Hey man, you might be in your car. 
pull that car over on the side of the road. I've done this before in my life, in my experience with God, where it became so great on me, I got out of my company vehicle, and I began shouting and dancing around my vehicle on company time in a company vehicle because the power of God became so great. These are the experiences that are the most important in this generation. It's more important than all of the necessities this world has listed. This is the most important. Who cares what the neighbors think that are next door? Who cares what others say? Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. This is the power. Power into your house. Power into your home. Overcoming power. Overcoming power. For the poison of the serpent can't touch you. Overcoming power. Where Satan can't touch you. Overcoming power. Speaking in tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah 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 I encourage you continue praying and share this with everybody you know Share it, share it, share it. In the name of Jesus, this concludes our service. Keep praying. Hi, this is Pastor Kevin Martin, and I just want to thank y'all for joining us today tuning in and being a part of our service. We hope that it was a blessing to you and that you were uplifted and encouraged and felt the presence of the Lord. If you would like to know more about our church, please join us at www.atascacitaupc.com and you will find all of the ministries. You will find pictures where you can take a journey and see everything that's been going on at the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita. And uh, we hope that you join us again very soon. God bless you.